Hey everybody, Nick here, and today we're gonna do a little bit of disassembly on this little guy right here. This is the Spyderco Polestar. Um, first off, of course, it's a Spyderco, and it's ugly that disassembling this knife does void the factory warranty. Generally, they're okay about things, and I do get the sense that some things are changing over at Spyderco HQ in that department, based on some of their recent public comments, but still, it's ugly. The other thing that we're gonna have to check for here is the presence of a uh, red Loctite or another form of permanent thread locker. It's deeply ugly, and it can cause, well, major issues in disassembly. So the very number one lesson to learn from this is that um, with Spydercos, well, at least modern ones, you should never use a great deal of torque. You can see here that there is a little tiny bit of thread locker in here, but it's nothing permanent, so we're okay there. A little bit of turning just did the trick as I needed it to. There we go, problem solved. But if you are disassembling your Spyderco, particularly your Polestar, just make sure that you're not having to really crank on it because chances are you're gonna strip your screw because that screw does not want to turn. Alrighty, there we go. This has been pretty straightforward so far. That's nice. The design on this knife is frankly very, um, I don't know, subtle? Uh, you know, there, there's not a whole lot going on with it here. So, uh, and that's kind of a beautiful thing in a lot of ways. I, I appreciate the fact that this is a relatively simple knife. And I think that's an important part of what allows them to make this a budget-friendly option. My one other concern here is that this little lanyard tube here is kind of peened open and is going to hold this knife together. Meaning that the only thing I can really do is um, sort of lift the scale around and then sort of rotate it around the lanyard tube. Um, Spyderco's had a habit of doing that lately. It's ugly each and every time they do it, but, you know, I can get past it, I suppose. Okay. The G10 came off. This could just be a question of tolerance. Yeah, okay. No, oh, cool. It popped right off. All right. Now we're in. Oh, well, that was easy. Little stop pin in here. Just shouldered. Oh, this is a Spyderco PM2 style pivot. Uh, you know, there's got to be a term for this, but basically the pivot, uh, the washer is held captive by the pivot. And, uh, you know, so you need to make sure that that's done properly. But, uh, you know, we'll talk about how that works. And a little bit of, there you go. That's on the other side. All right, great. So it's cleaning time. That went a little smoother than I expected. Like I said, Spyderco's been very Loctite happy lately, but I'm glad to hear that that hasn't reached their Chinese factory yet. A little bit of permanent thread locker I can live with, especially, or, you know, in impermanent stuff. Oh, that's more than a little bit. This, this washer appears to be sort of glued down, probably by that same thread locker. By the way, it's a little early in the morning, if you're hearing this, so with apologies for the sniffles. Oh, the joys of springtime for the allergic soul. Alrighty. Um, so I got two options here. This little washer here is stuck on. Um, I could probably get up under it with a, uh, with a knife or a razor blade or something like that. Uh, I'll give it a try here. There you go. Just using my rat too here because it's a, a pretty uh, thin behind the edge sort of thing. And you can see, oh yeah, look at that. <coughs> that is uh, thread locker right there. <coughs> ah. Sorry guys, my larynx has just informed me that it is too early to film. But that's okay. The larynx isn't the one calling the shots around here. Larynx, of course, being your voice box. Anyways, um, so yeah, that popped off pretty straightforwardly, and it was just being held on by thread locker. That's ugly, but it's not the end of the world, I suppose. <clears throat> That's a reason to use very little of it. Thread locker, that is. And the other thing is that can cause issues with uh, tolerances. You could end up in a situation where you, uh, I'm just kind of scraping that off as best I can here. But you could end up with issues where you, uh, you're out of spec because there's too much material up behind the washer. And that's a different flavor of ugly, really. And is really frustrating when it happens. 
But, I mean, the knife was fine when I took it apart, so I figure it'll be fine when I put it back together. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go on ahead and remove the pivot on this side. If it fights me at all, I'm not gonna, but there we go. It did not. <clears throat> so I pulled the pivot over here. Now I should just be able to pop this out. Well, there. Interesting, the G10 is delaminating slightly, maybe? Is that what's up? Hmm. It may be the case that all of that is for naught if this pivot is not willing to actually come loose. This could be a question of tolerances. It could be a question of too much thread locker. There are a bunch of questions this could be a question of, but, you know, honestly, at a very real level, it doesn't super matter. If this guy doesn't want to come apart because they drowned it in Loctite, that's okay. We can live with this. So what I'm going to go ahead and do then <coughs> is... Oh, there we go. It broke loose. It is in the process of breaking loose. There we go. Yep, just too much damn thread locker. Which means, in turn, that this guy right here... Yeah, that was also stuck down. And yeah, again, we look inside here, we see too much damn Loctite. Oh, Spider-Co. This is a weird knife. Very, very, very weird knife. I'm still trying to figure out exactly what I think about it for the review. I mean, at some level, it's a fine knife. It's, it's okay. It's solid. But another level, I don't quite know what it's doing. I don't know quite know what they're aiming it for. What is this filling in in Spyderco's lineup? I mean, it's it's relatively inexpensive, but it's the same price as a Delica. Which is, again, relatively inexpensive, but I don't get it. But that's okay. I don't necessarily need to. <coughs> okay. So now what we're going to do, um, one thing you should notice here, oh, good God, the amount of freaking Loctite on this pivot is, hopefully this guy's going to run a lot better. So one of my biggest issues with this guy is that it had what felt to be zero detent in the, um, in opening, uh, so it really didn't flick well at all. And uh, so one of my, my dream here is that I'm going to be able to improve that a little bit via the whole cleaning situation. Right now, I'm just scraping out a little bit of this Loctite here. And it could well be that by removing some of this excess thread locker, which, by the way, is ugly, um, I can really make a difference in life. And at the end of the day, isn't that what we all want, to make a little difference in life? <coughs> all righty. Because if I can send this guy back a little happier, then, well, that's a beautiful thing. See, this is part of the reason why I want to do a disassembly. Um, you know, and I've said this a bunch of times, but it lets me put knives onto an even basis for comparison. <clears throat> if I would have just reviewed this knife on the basis of how it came out of the box, I'd have a slightly different impression than after I've taken it apart and worked on it a little bit. He generally, taking, well, actually, taking it apart, working on it, results in it being slightly better pretty much always. Um, it's a little cocky to say, but I've never really had a knife where I felt like this knife is worse after I finish with it. The very least, I bring it back to where it was. And part of that is by design. If it's not back to where it was when I finish working on it, I'm not finished working on it. That can be very frustrating at times, but and I'm using just a little tiny hint of thread locker here. Note how little I'm using. Also note that this pivot is D-shaped on one side. Well, actually, it's rectangular on one side, which allows it to not rotate. 
that's going to be a problem for you if you're putting it back together and forget that fact. Okay, there we go. One other thing that you could certainly do is take the uh, clip off, take these screws off, and then uh, do the other side. Like coat the other side in a frog lube or something. That might not be a terrible idea. The thing is, though, I'm not seeing any sign of corrosion on this. It's a relatively new knife. And I am a little bit afraid of stripping out one of these million screws back here. Given that Spyderco is intending to use super strong screws lately, ever, um, uh, you know, it seems like the risk-reward thing. I'm, I'm, there's always a danger of corrosion, but the danger of stripping a screw feels just that much more frightening to me. And so I'm, I think I'm going to go ahead and skip that step. That calculus might be a little different if this was my knife, though. I'll say that much. But, frankly, it wouldn't be that different. But what I am doing here is applying... I got it off camera here. Sorry, this is frog lube paste. I'm just applying a little bit of it to the liners on the inside here. Um, the reason is just for anti-corrosion reasons. Not a big deal. This is not going to be the most anti-corrosive sort of knife ever anyways. It's, you know, well, BD1's fine on the corrosion front. But still, might as well do what I can for my viewer here. Get everything looking okay. All right. Uh, last thing I need to do is clear out the inside of the pivot here. And I'm going to use a little boost to do that. There we go. And then we are ready to reassemble. And then we are ready to carry this guy a little bit more. Interesting little knife, but like I said, not sure why it's a thing. Okay. So, as I've said previously, the... Um, Washers here are held captive by the pivot, so, uh, you know, unlike, for instance, on a Sebenza, uh, it's fully expected for this washer to be kind of trapped by the uh, pivot as you tighten that down, so don't worry too much about that. You also need to lubricate the back side of it because, uh, well, it's not going to be moving against anything. It's going to be held captive. This is like the pocket knife version of that movie Taken. I shouldn't joke about human trafficking, but whatever. Moving it along. All right, pop that there. Beautiful. Now, let's apply a little bit of thread locker here. Am I missing anything? No, all right. Beautiful. And just going to put this in. Moderately tightly for now. It's uh, the same, I think I mentioned this already, but that's the same system used on the Spyderco PM2 uh, and Manix 2G10 and, you know, a few others. That captive pivot thing works fine. It's interesting that there aren't other manufacturers, at least that I'm aware of, who are using that system. Don't quite know what that's about, but it is what it is. Alrighty, a little bit of Loctite on these screws. Now we pop it back in here. Last step is just going to be to tune the action a little bit. Oh, there's still no freaking detent on this knife. And that's too strong. I'm just kind of dialing this around here. Centering's good. There's a little blade play there, so I gotta tighten this back up a little. That's too tight. Yeah, this is just. I 
action is fine. It's scented. Um, it's no better than it was, but it is, well, actually, I'm sorry, that's not true. It is smoother than it was, because uh, it was basically running on lubricated, but um, at the same time, it's not, the detent isn't much better, etc. Just double check for blade play. No, no. Yeah, all right, we're good to go. So, um, this is your Spyderco Pole Star. I hope this has been interesting to you and maybe perhaps slightly informative. Um, but mostly, I hope that you have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.